the Holocaust, a period between 1939 to 1945 when six million Jews were exterminated in Nazi death camps. One of the most recognizable camps was called Auschwitz. Rabbi Dr. Murray J. Cohn is one of the survivors that was liberated from Auschwitz. Dr. Cohn was brought to the camp in November 1942 and freed in January of 1945. He has agreed to share his ordeal, allowing us a glimpse into his past. They died for one reason, because they were born Jews. And this is exactly my mission, to tell it as it is. I was born in 1929 in Poland, in a very wonderful city. My wonderful parents and grandparents, my entire family lived there. And uh, I had a wonderful Jewish education, also a secular education, Zionist education, a religious education. And um, I did have, indeed, a, a happy childhood. But all this ended in 1939, when the war broke out in September 1. And then when it all started. Downhill. By the time I was um, at ten and a half, I was already in the ghetto. Uh, by the time I was uh, twelve and a half, uh, I had already behind me a good year and a half in the ghetto. In the ghetto, interestingly enough, as difficult as it was, and, and, uh, uh, but be it as it may, uh, by the time I was twelve and a half, uh, the orders came to uh, take us out from the ghetto. First the elderly and children and orphans and all kinds of people. And from there they have transported us to Auschwitz. We didn't know where we are going, uh, but three nights, four days, in the middle of the night we arrived at Auschwitz. We didn't know where we were. We were only told that we are going to a labor camp. The slaver camp, we didn't know that this part of the final solution. We were separated uh, out of a transport of 3,000 people. Um, uh, 350 men were selected for labor and 150 women also for slave labor. The rest, the same night, November 22nd, 1942, they all lost their lives. They were gassed. They used bus, a gas called Zyklon B, which was basically rat poison. And then the bodies were to be burned uh, to ash, and the ashes unceremoniously dumped behind the camp of uh, Auschwitz. Uh, although they were killing people so fast, they actually ended up resorting to uh, digging pits out, you know, away from the crematoria where they then uh, threw the bodies onto flaming logs to, to get rid of them. Today, Dr. Cohn's daughter, Sarah K. Rosenberg, teaches about her father's past struggles at Congregation Beth Tikva. Today is May. Today is the 60th anniversary of the liberation from the concentration camp. Yom HaShoah was this past Thursday. This, today, commemorates the anniversary of when they were liberated. Now, unfortunately, there's still a lot of people out there all over the world who believe that the Holocaust never happened. And that's a real shame. On the day that they were taking, taken to the concentration camp, my father and his father were spared, but his mother and his sister were automatically put right into the gas chambers, and they never saw, you know, the next day. So it's very... my, my most of my father's family got wiped out at that point, which is a real shame. Auschwitz is one of the remaining camps that will never ever be touched, and there's always guards there to make sure that nothing is ever taken because that's the one that's being preserved to show what exactly did happen. 
you should feel honored to be in Hebrew school because there's actually a lot of places where people still have to learn underground. They can't go around with the Jewish neck with the Jewish star on their necklace. When I went out of the country and I had to get a passport taken, they insisted that I took my Jewish star off. Because they said if I had the Jewish star on my picture of my passport, that it could cause a lot of trouble for me. But two days after being out of the country, I couldn't take it anymore. I put my Jewish star back on because I didn't feel that I had anything ashamed to be, you know, I didn't have anything to be ashamed of. Growing up with my father, he never really spoke about the Holocaust all the time. Once in a while, when you watch the History Channel, he would say something about his experiences. But when I learned the most about my father was when I took his course at Stockton State College, I took his Holocaust program, and that's when I learned about his entire history of his being in the, in the concentration camps. I always knew that he was an avid stamp collector. And then I found out, taking his course, that one time his family were in their house in Poland, and one time the Gestapo came in, and they looked around the house, and my father was sitting on a stool looking at looking over his stamp collection, and the soldiers just went and took all his stamps, and learning what he went through as a child living in that situation, I can start relating to why he does things today. And this is where it started. It started a tragic uh, story of trying to survive. As a matter of fact, I would say we never thought in our streets about survival. We thought only for the daily survival of having enough to eat, which in most cases was not the case. So we struggled. We ran. We fell. We worked. We were beaten. We were molested. We were treated like animals. And animals, as a matter of fact, to be a dog and a Nazi household was uh, uh, was a privilege, but this is how it was. I started to realize what my father was going through when we were watching a program called the World the World of Wars, and my father started going into somewhat of a detail of what he was going through. For example, when he was still living in Poland, and they wanted some food, and the Nazis were, of course, marching through the town. And when he would get some food and the Nazis would stop him and they'd find it in his clothes, he would be beaten. And when I saw this and I started questioning my dad and he told me these stories, he started to explain a lot of what he went through and he showed me his numbers on his arm, which will be with him for the rest of his life. I cannot tell you how I survived. And there is no point of even discussing it because I don't know. It's plain, simple happen chance. I just, it happened that I survived. By all rules and by all means and by all understandings, by all the conditions notwithstanding, I should be dead. As a matter of fact, my uh, length of survival in concentration camp was estimated between three months and six months. By six months, all the people, in most of the cases, very few, uh, have survived. You were nothing else but a subject to be manipulated, exploited, and discarded. Like a cigarette butt. Your dying was absolutely unimportant and minimal. The orders were given to liquidate the camp. The Russians were coming from the east, and the Americans and the other allies were coming from the west. But the Russians were the main front, and since uh, the allies were um, in France, and they were near, they were in Poland. Mm -hmm. and from there, uh, we were taken, not knowing where, but I was in the very famous death march. This death barge was a matter of life and death, about 75% died. Anybody who couldn't evacuate, anybody who couldn't march, anybody who couldn't leave was killed. Again, how I made it, I don't know. But this was around a 100-kilometer march. 
sometimes burned alive in buildings, sometimes put in boxcars where uh, boxcars were set on fire, uh, rooms set on fire, and people shot. They were on motorcycles or on, uh, or, uh, uh, on in, in, in vehicles, but we had to run. So then on May 8th, May 8th, uh, I was told that I am free. The Russian soldiers came in, the Russian army came in, and we were free. The big problem was uh, how to help the prisoners, who many of them who had gone from, say, 150 pounds down to 80 pounds or 70 pounds was horrible. Uh, I was told that my father is alive, but I didn't want to believe him. He knew that his mother and sister were killed in the gas chambers, but he did not know if his father was still alive. My father was wound up in Italy, and I discovered my father was alive. He left Italy, came to New York. When he met, when he was in New York, he ended up meeting my mother, who was living in Boston, and they got married. And my father went into Hebraic studies, where he became a Hebrew school teacher. And then a few years later, he went into rabbinical school and he became a rabbi. As a matter of fact, he's, he's known throughout the country he was actually just named Man of the Year for the Jewish Federation in the country. He was honored in Ohio last year. Dr. Cohn lives in Vineland, New Jersey, with his wife Beverly, and teaches others at Stockton College about the Holocaust. Dr. Cohn will never forget the horrors of Auschwitz and hopes that we all continue to remember.